Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Samuel, and I'll be taking the training on uh, static tools analysis today. So, a uh, static tools is one of the development tool you need to know before you dive into development. Uh, yesterday, we had a session on GitHub, which is a very important development tool. So, likewise, static tools are uh, uh, are also development tools which we need to know before uh, we start development. So hope you guys have uh, done the setup for uh, Devico Studio. If not, uh, please make sure you do it by today because uh, uh, going on, you will have a lot of uh, assignments uh, and uh, uh, hands-on sessions uh, wherein you will need the Devico Studio to understand the concepts uh, better. Okay, so going forward, uh, yeah, uh, now let's check the contents of this training. So, Today's training will include uh, initial understanding of uh, uh, static code analysis. What are the benefits and what are the types of defects that are found? After which we'll learn about uh, local configuration of static tools in our IDE, that is uh, Devico Studio. Later we'll see the configuration that is required before the code commit to GitHub. Okay, the main objective of having this session uh, uh, initially is that you will make this a practice and uh, use it in the assignments that you'll be assigned in the following trainings. This session will have uh, both theory and uh, hands-on session. Any queries, please note them all down and you can ask them at the end of the session. And so let's start with the training. Uh, I've So static tools will actually help us in the analysis of the code. So let's see the types of code analysis that we have got. Uh, that is the two, uh, the one is static and one is dynamic. So what is static code analysis? It is a method of uh, analyzing a code before the program is run. Uh, this is actually done by checking the given code against some set of coding rules, like uh, uh, coding rules as in it could be max numbers of lines within a file or within a method or a number of branchings within a method to maintain the readability for the user and uh, so on and so forth. There are hundreds of uh, uh, static rules that can be implied on any given code. So such code, such rules are can be uh, statically analyzed on any given code. The other one is dynamic code analysis. Um, dynamic code analysis is nothing but analyzing the given code after the program is run. So for this, we need the program to be run. After that, using the uh, uh, after the after the program is built or run, only then you can analyze this. Uh, uh, you you can do the dynamic code analysis. Uh, we uh, one certain example is unit testing, uh, but the problem with uh, dynamic code analysis is that we might not be able to find all the issues. Uh, through dynamic code analysis, uh, static code analysis can be can uh, can actually try to find out or it has no restrictions on any particular branch of the code. It will uh, we can enforce that static uh, rules on any part of the code, unlike dynamic code because it it will have some dependencies on the APIs and the uh, IDE support as well. So what are the benefits that we've got with uh, uh, static tools? Today's session is about static uh, code analysis. So we will be focusing on static code analysis today. Uh, dynamic code analysis, that is unit testing and all, we have a different session. So we will go in detail about that on a different day. So what are the benefits we have got? Speed, depth, and accuracy. Speed as in uh, static code, code analysis will happen very quickly. Uh, if there is no static code analysis, we'll have to do it in a manual way. That is a manual review uh, will have to be done on a given code, which will definitely take more time. And the reviewer time is also uh, sp uh, spent on reviewing the part of the code that can be automated. Then uh, the depth of the code, uh, when you tell depth of the code, uh, a dynamic code, or dynamics uh, analysis of the code will not actually cover every branch uh, that is present in the code. Uh, 
but when it comes to static code analysis, it will be able to analyze every branch that is present within the code, as I had previously mentioned. Uh, accuracy also comes into picture because even if we say that uh, uh, time is not a constraint and we go ahead with manual review, it will be prone to errors. Uh, but anything that a tool does will ideally have less chances or less possibilities of uh, leakage of any issues. So that will improve the code quality also. So now let's check what are the types of defects that uh, we'll be able to find out using static code analysis. Okay, uh, these are the main five uh, types of defects that we can find out. Potential security vulnerabilities. Maybe we are printing some uh, stack traces within our code. Uh, maybe when an exception is occurring, we might be printing some stack traces or there is incorrect uh, code injections within the code, which can actually uh result in uh, giving out uh, uh, essential or uh, secret info information uh, to the hackers or uh, uh, hackers actually so uh, bug risk bug risks and the anti anti patterns I, you might already know what is bug risks anti patterns are like uh, you can say uh, you have a issue and you give a fix but that issue uh, that uh, fix itself is inducing some other errors because of poor design. Such poor design is actually called uh, anti anti pattern. Okay, and uh, violation of code style guidelines, as in uh, uh, check style guidelines. Uh, it could be alignment of the code, or uh, import order, or cyclomatic complexity. Cyclomatic complexity in the sense uh, um, number of uh, branching within a given method. Say branch uh, code will be branched out when you use uh, um, if or else or switch cases or any such uh, 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 pro uh, programming techniques. So in such a cases, you, you can actually limit the number of uh, uh, branching within the code to make the code more readable to the developer or other developers. Okay. And uh, the fourth one is performance issues. Maybe you are writing some infinite loops or uh, any uh, memory leakage issues are there. Like you have defined some observables and you have forgot to uh, destroy them. So you can actually find out such issues using static code analysis and dead code or unused codes, code in the sense, uh, you would have written some code which is never getting used later on. So in a way that code is actually not required uh, so it will uh, static code analysis will actually help you out to uh, sort out such issues. Okay, uh, now let's check the static tools that we will be using using in applet group uh, community, and uh, what are the tools that are configured in in our uh, CI that is continuous integration. Uh, if you if you're not sure of what is uh, CI, uh, CI is actually a uh, CI full form is actually continuous integration. It is actually a development practice where developers integrate their code um, into a shared repository or a common place so that uh, each and every integration of the code will undergo some automated build or automated tests, you can say. It is something like a pipeline which will execute some automated tests or automated builds. You can say it like that. Okay. So that is uh, so the tools that we will be using in Apple community are, uh, there are uh, mainly two tools that is Sonar Cube or uh, Sonar Cloud. Uh, Sonar Cube in the sense, I'll be, uh, that is a tool that you can configure within your IDE. So that is Sonar Cube and one that is an CI that is called Sonar Cloud. And uh, both will, both do the same fun function, both have uh, similar functionalities itself. And check style idea is a check style or uh, uh, plugin that you can integrate within your uh, IDE. So we'll see how we can uh, do this. So I'll be explaining the local configuration that is ID integration of both these tools. Later we'll see what needs to be configured in the uh, project when you are going to commit into the uh, GitHub. Okay. So first let's start with Sonar Cube uh, configuration in Devico Studio. So I'll explain the uh, procedure. Everything is documented. If you have any queries, uh, note them down. We'll uh, try to uh, clarify. I'll try to clarify it at the end of the session. Okay. Uh, so 
the tools required for setting up this uh, static tool is the uh, first one is sonar cube you can download it from this particular link uh, and you need java 11 uh, preferably ha try to install java, java 11 itself not an older version or a newer version to avoid any issues when you are uh, running sonar cube and devico studio it must have a local project uh, these three are required before you go ahead trying to configure so after that it's a three-step process uh, quite simple. I'll just explain you how it needs to be done. First step is create and run a Sonar Cube server instance locally in your uh, personal computer. After that, you need to add the Sonar configurations in uh, build.gradle of the project, execute Sonar Cube from the IDE. I'll explain each step in detail. Uh, we'll uh, go through it and, uh, and we can do a, a hands on session also for configuration of this. So, create and run a server instance in the sense uh, we'll have to make, uh, make sure that sonar cube uh, i've already mentioned a, a link over here right once you download this uh, let me show it to you in my desktop once you download that you will get a folder like this okay so in here you need to go inside this uh, this is what it means you need to go inside that and then uh, uh, run the start sonar dot batch file. Once you do it, your server server instance will be running on uh, nine thousand port. Okay, so you need to uh, open the dashboard on localhost nine thousand, and then you need to uh, log in to the login uh, using this uh, default credentials. So if you're doing it for the first time, it will be these credentials. You just need to log in. And once the login is successful, you can create a project within the dashboard. Uh, for example, you are creating a project called uh, Sample Lab. You name the project key as Sample Lab and then go ahead. And then after that, you can, you need to add the, pro yeah, this is, uh, I'll explain all these steps when we will do the hands-on session. So let's start with the hands-on session instead of just uh, reading through the PPT. This you can refer it when you are going through the PPT, when you are Trying to install if you're stuck anywhere you can refer this ppt uh, let me show it to you uh, how you can do it so once you download the uh, sonar cube you will have a folder like this just go to bin and you'll have a windows folder if you are using mac just go inside mac uh, if it is windows just come over here and then you need to run this start sonar batch file so Once you do it, so that is it from your side. Now you just need to run the local host over here. Default port will be 9000. In case 9000 is already occupied, you can change the port number over here. Uh, in the Sonar Cube folder itself, come to conf folder, then you have Sonar properties. Yeah, you have Sonar web port, right? You need to uncomment this and then change the port over here. Since I'm okay with 9000 port, I'll uh, stick with 9000 itself. In case if you find an issue saying 9000 port is already occupied, you can do this. Okay, now when you come in here, just enter the password. I have changed my password, so I'll. Uh, it's not uh, admin admin. I've just changed the password of my uh, account. Sorry. Yeah. So this is how your dashboard will look like. It will have the projects. I ha I already have a few projects which I've run previously. So it is showing the results of each one. So this is a project tab. Issues will show the issues present uh, from the projects that are run. Then these are all the types of rules that are uh, present. Then quality profiles, you can configure the quality gates also. Uh, basically, uh, you can stick with the Sonar uh, default one itself. There is no problem. Uh, so what you need to do next is once you get this dashboard, go to create project.
manually and then click on my app uh my app in the sense the project name that i'll be using will be my app so i i have configured it as my app okay so let's once this is done you can just click on setup then go with locally here you'll have to generate a token since you guys will be uh, using this for the first time you can just enter the name of the token maybe i'll uh I'm just naming it like this, then I'll generate. But I already have a token. So what I'll do is I'll use the same uh, existing token. When you guys do it, use a uh, uh, generated token and use that token which uh, came in there, copy it, and then uh, keep it in a place because you'll require the token in a later point of time, okay? So I have a token over here, which I've already generated. Paste this, continue. And since our project will be using Gradle build, we'll go ahead with, uh, we'll select the Gradle over here. Once this is done, you go to uh, Devico Studio. I already have an application, a sample application just for uh, showing you guys a demo. So you need not worry about the code that is present. Just uh, uh, try to understand the, uh, uh, static uh, code analysis part of it, or how we integrate the tool with the ID. Okay. So I have a project. So this is the project structure. I have a, uh, what you need to do is once you open the project over here, uh, you need to open the projects build out Gradle. In, within the project, you'll find two, uh, two build out Gradles. One will be within entry build out Gradle. You need not go with that just within the project folder you'll have a build out gradle enter enter into that build out gradle and you need to uh, enter few information which is already mentioned in the ppt when you go in the flow you will find out till now whatever i've explained is all about this uh, open the url 9000 admin admin login is successful all this i've already done i've shown it to you guys okay so uh, this was the last thing that we have done that is uh, Gradle, we have set up the project in the dashboard. So we need to configure some configurations within our project locally. So this is the one. So we need to copy these contents into our build.gradle and then we need to uh, execute Sonar Cube from uh, the Devico Studio, okay? So let me do that. Let me uh, take in that info. I have a, I have also pasted a build.gradle over here so you can refer it from here. Let me open it up from here. So apply plugin, class path, and sonar queue properties. These three, I'll take it from here because copying and pasting will be easier from here. So apply plugin, copy this, and go into build.gradle that I have specified. Now that is within the project. And the second one you need to copy is dependency within the dependency you have some uh, class path regarding sonar cube Add it. and then you need to configure few sonar cube properties over here okay that's all you need to do since we have mentioned the project key over there as my app we'll make this also my app over here Okay, and make sure your Sonar host URL is having the correct uh, uh, URL over here. Since I'm using localhost 9000, I'll be using this. If in case you're changing the port number, make sure you change the port number over here also. And that is it. Now, once this is done, uh, there is one other thing that you need to do that is specified in uh, PPT as well. Uh, you need to add these two properties within gradle.properties file. So copy this, go into Gradle properties, paste this, and then you have system property sonar login. This is the token that we have generated, right? I have used the token that I already had, so I'll use the same thing. Sonar login, that is all. Once you do this, 
your configuration from the IDE is done for Sonar Cube. So you just need to execute it. So let me show how you can execute this. Go into terminal. You have various options within the IDE below. So you have a terminal option where you can run uh, command line uh, func uh, command line. Uh, uh, you can execute the build actions or any action from the command line. So you need to execute this command before doing this, always make sure you clean the project. Otherwise some build, uh, there will be some build folders over here, right? It, your sonar cube will try to analyze them also. So we'll just do a clean build, just a gradle clean command. After that, we'll try to run the sonar cube. Okay, the sonar cube uh, analysis is successful. Let's go into our dashboard again because that is where we have the project configured. Okay, it is showing as failed. That means there are a few rules that have actually, uh, when which when analyzed, have actually not passed. So let's check. This is the project that we have uh, configured, right? So you can find all the issues that were raised during the sonar cube analysis in the issue tab. So blocker, there are several types of issues, bug, vulnerability, code smells, blocker, critical, major, minor info. So when you're developing, make sure all uh, critical and major issues should be zero. Make sure all of these issues are fixed. So this particular project is having several uh, critical and major issues. So you can just check the different kinds of issues that it will actually throw. So it is actually telling define a constant inside this particular class. It will mention the class name or the uh, file name in detail. So you just need to search for that file over here. Intro slice. And it is telling intro slice constant is getting duplicated so many times. Somewhere we are using uh, the constant. We have hard coded the constant. Yeah, we are we have hard coded this constant multiple times over here. So it is asking us to initialize it using a variable and then uh, reuse it, reuse that defined variable instead of hard coding the same variable. Why it is telling it? Because in case we want to change the string later on, if we have a common string somewhere defined at the top, we can just change it once and then everywhere it will be changed. If that is not the case. Uh, if we uh, if we don't have a common string string like how it is now, then uh, we'll have to change it in each and every place where uh, this hard coded string is present. So that is a good practice we need to follow. So similarly, all these issues we'll have to check and then we'll have to fix. Okay, this is how we'll configure uh, Sonar Cube within IDE. So this is one tool. Now let me get on to the next tool that is uh, check style. So. Sonar Cube part we have finished. Let me get on to presentation mode. Yeah, the second tool that we will be configuring is uh, Checkstyle IDEA. This is nothing but a plugin. So this is a four-step process again. Uh, we need to uh, install the Checkstyle IDEA plugin within the IDE, then download the Checkstyle configuration file. After which we can uh, configure the Checkstyle configuration file to the install plugin, execute check style on the code. I'll explain the, the process like I, how I did to the previous tool and then you can, uh, yeah, then we'll go through the process again. Okay. So how do we configure check style within our ID? Let me show it to you. You go to file settings and then you have, uh, since I've already installed, I'll get it, but since you guys would be doing it for the first time, go to plugins and then search for check style over here. Okay. I have already installed, so it will show me install. Otherwise, it will ask you to install. Just click on it. Once it is installed, you can, uh, uh, once it is installed, what you need to do is uh, the tool will be listed in the tool section over here. Here, how you have check style marked over here, right? So you need to come into this section. 
and then uh, you need to add i've already added so let me remove it and then show it to you how to do it you need to click on this plus file and then uh, name it like check style now we need to configure the check style uh, config file within the ide so how do i get the check style config file let me show you where you can get it this is a place download the check style a configuration file i have mentioned one xml over here just open it and uh, you can check this is the check style file that uh, the ci in the applet group community will be using so you can also use the same one in case there are any changes over here that will then you can also get it once you update it okay so let me save it in some place This is saved as a txt file. We need to save it as Once you do that, you can remove this. Always make sure it is an XML file. TXT file will give you errors there. So once you have done this, just go in here, browse it. Yeah, once I've set the path to the uh, file that I've saved, just go next and then finish it, then select it, then apply. After which you can click OK. Once you do that, you'll find the check style tab over here. So go there, select the custom check style, and then within the file where you want this check style to run, ideally you'll need to run this on all the Java files that you'll have. So I have a main ability slice, go in there, run it. All these issues are lifted up. Uh, I mean, all these uh, issues are listed over here. So you, we'll need to fix all these issues. Wrong order import, it seems. So a wrong order import of what? Uh, ability slice. So basically the import order will be OHOS uh, imports have to come first, followed by com dot. If there is any com dot, Imports that have to be followed after OHOS imports. So we'll keep these after OHOS and then check if the issue is solved. If it is solved. So there is there are some unused imports also. Let's remove them. These are all unused imports. Now it's reduced to five. It's telling some Java doc is missing. So Java docs are nothing but a comment, uh, comments for a class or a method to make the method or class more readable. So that by looking at the comment, I understand what exactly this particular class is doing. So it has to be more meaningful. Um, this particular, you can just explain the functionality of the uh, class over here. So I'll just, when you do it, make sure you add a meaningful sentence over there. So I'll be just, this is just demo purpose. So I'll not be writing anything. So just make sure you add a Java doc document wherever it is asking you to add a Java document. The met method def separated from a previous line. Just make sure 
to add a white line or a empty line before uh, the method is actually getting started in 33.5. Again, it is asking a Java document. Initialize views present in this slice. So, what is the error? Uh, comma is not followed by white space 5945. You can ch check the index exactly over here. Selling after the comma, it needs a white space. We give it. And this is also in the same line in a different column that is 5947. Over here, just give a white space. Yeah. Uh, this is for one file I've shown you a demo. Similarly, you will have to follow and do Why it. For yeah okay so similarly we'll have to follow the same check style rules i mean we'll have to execute this check style for all the java files that we have got within the project and then make sure uh, the check style issues are not there okay this is how you configure the static tools within your ide so there is one small tweak when you're going to uh, configure uh, uh, till now whatever i've shown you is how you add the configuration or uh, customize your configuration for running it on the ide now let us check how to add the configurations when we have to commit the code into github okay so when you do it for the when you when you're going to commit the code into the github make sure you are actually following this particular slide over here that is, we need to add all in the, all these uh, properties. Some will be repetitive. Some will have some different properties, uh, property values. So when you're going to commit it into uh, GitHub, make sure your host URL is not localhost. It should be HTTP is sonar cloud This is the main difference. Let us uh, try and the sample uh, build out cradle also. I have pasted over here. You can check. We can check this. So these are the new ones that you'll have to add. ORG Sonar Cube and then the plugin check style. Then after you do that, you add this plugin as you did for uh, local configuration. Apart from that, you'll have to add this check style. So what happens here is the check style uh, tool is integrated with the sonar cloud so whatever configuration file is present that will be given to sonar and then sonar will be able to execute the check style uh, rules also so you mentioned that this needs to be added in addition and then sonar key properties also will have to be added so make sure the project key pattern is like this organization name underscore your project name and then organization is your organization applet group and then host URL, this will be differing from your local configuration. This I'm repeating because you need to change the value over here. And then uh, you, you can, this serve as it is. And sonar.java check style dot report paths, this will point to the check style XML that whatever we have configured, uh, we have saved it over, saved and then we have configured in uh, IDE, right? That particular file will be present in uh, CI also. So that will be pointing to on uh, the path where uh, check style is check style xml is present so yeah so that is all about the configuration of the ci